Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's phase two webinar, Using Customer Data to Uncover Audience Insights. My name is Chris Jorgensen, and I'm excited to turn things over to today's presenter, Jason Hamrick, in just a few moments to get us started. More than ever, marketers are feeling pressure to demonstrate the value of their outreach, as audiences expect a personalized experience and the C-suite demands results. Marketers are also drinking from a fire hose of customer data, coming from a host of disparate, often disconnected systems. Squeezed from all sides, marketers need a strategy to wring real value out of their data. Over the next hour, we'll show you how to take control of your audience data, use it to connect your digital engagement strategy to business outcomes, and leverage the digital measurement model to determine if your digital strategy is meeting those goals. Please send us your questions via the Q&A module, and we will also be sharing a recording of today's webinar after it concludes. For those of you who might not know us, Phase 2 is a proven partner in advancing the digital landscape, evident by 20 years of experience, trailblazing work, and a culture of constant invention. Experts in the complete digital experience, our team provides services including research and insights, strategy and design, and engineering expertise for building digital platforms. Today's presenter is Jason Hamrick. Jason is our Director, Data and Insights, with more than 15 years of experience in creating award-winning online presences for organizations both large and small. The optimization and insights team Jason is a part of here at Phase 2 focuses on three areas of specialty, marketing technology, personalization, and data and analytics. Over the course of his career, Jason has developed customer and audience engagement strategies for national brands like CrossFit, national nonprofits like the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, and government organizations like the National Institutes of Health and the US State Department. Jason's primary focus is ensuring that the content and engagement strategy we create for our clients has a measurable impact on their organizational goals and empowers their teams to execute and refine that strategy long after their engagement with phase two is complete. Jason, take it away. Thanks so much, Chris. Uh, today, we're gonna to be talking about the customer data problem, a bit about phase two's approach to meeting that problem. We'll take a quick detour into the digital measurement model and its role in activating customer data. We'll spend just a few minutes on the topic of audience segmentation, what it is and how to use it. In the challenges and solutions section, we'll review some challenges that the phase two team has heard from marketers like you and some steps that you can take to meet those challenges. We'll close with three simple steps you can take today to get started using customer data and we'll make, some time, make sure we leave some time to take some Q and A. So let's begin. Marketers uh, have long been facing a dilemma. And their old dilemma was a customer data problem of not having data on customers. Spray and pray was really the solution for marketing messages. You put lots of messages out into the market and hope that one of them sticks. But now modern marketers are faced with a new dilemma. This new dilemma is in many ways, the exact opposite, too much data on customers, and it's not just from online channels. It's scattered across disparate systems that don't talk to each other with different definitions of the same thing in different places, different identifiers for the same individual, and some of that data is just really hard to, to access. And it's not just this fire hose of data. We're also facing a new set of expectations that we're able to, to collect and manage, analyze, and act on the data. So customers are expecting to be remembered. They're saying, you know, seriously, how hard is it to know who I am? I was just here yesterday. I just bought something from you yesterday. Uh, your boss is probably saying, look, if Google can do this, why can't you? These are really high expectations from executives. And of course, the regulatory landscape has changed in many ways. And so we don't know how to comply with privacy best practices like GDPR and CCPA. Uh, most of us have been collecting customer data, but few of us 
We're doing anything with it. Uh, but now we've entered this watershed moment where all these pressures have compounded and marketers are now thinking, if I have to be legally accountable for customer data, I should at least derive some kind of business value from it. Phase two has an approach to addressing this customer data problem. The intent is to create a single unified view of the customer through their customer data and then use that view to derive insights and drive strategies toward measurable results. But how do we do that and what's our approach? We take a holistic approach that encompasses every aspect of customer data from defining what needs to be collected to activating that data in service or your digital strategy. Based on the analysis of data, we derive insights and take actions that achieve business goals and objectives by meeting user needs. And even though the end goal is a feedback loop of actionable insights, along the way, you'll uncover opportunities to improve your operations. So I wanna go into each of these in a little more detail. First is define, and, and when we're doing definition work, we're trying to answer the question, which customer data do we need to collect to meet business goals and gain a real understanding of the audience. The work is going to be conducting impact mapping workshops to surface to really capture those organizational goals, journey mapping workshops to connect those goals to customer data needed to meet the goals, and cre creating data dictionaries to help us define the exact customer data that we need to collect. The value of this step and really the outcome of this work is a clear understanding and an articulation of your business goals and a common understanding inside your team of how those goals align with your customer needs and the audience data that you have. So once we've defined this customer data, we need to collect the data. Here the question is, how can we consolidate all this data into centralized repositories? So the work is to inventory and audit the customer data ecosystem to see what you're already collecting and where it lives. Uh, implement and configure software to, to fill those gaps. You know, really, we want to create a MarTech ecosystem map in that first step so we understand what we're looking for. You might have also heard the phrase a digital experience map, or a digital experience landscape, a DX map. These are really different phrases for this same thing. Um, you want to take all of that information and integrate the data into a single repository. So this might be uh, something you've heard of, this customer data platform, a CDP. A CDP is just an example of one of these repositories. In the next part of our work, uh, we are going to be thinking about managing the data. So how do we make sure that data is secure and complies with regulatory requirements? Can customers see what data that we've collected on them and then ask for its deletion? Here we're doing the work of transforming data to anonymize it and make sure we're resolving duplicates. We're creating governance policies, compliance policies for things like GDPR, CCPA, and HIPAA, developing those security policies and procedures, including those policies for archival and deletion, and creating self-service portals for customer requests so they can do their, manage their own consent to have their data collected. The new regulatory landscape I mentioned and what we see here in CCPA, GDPR, and the other three-letter acronyms really changes the relationship that marketers have with customer data. We used to think of it as something that we take, but now we need to think about it as something that the customer loans to us for a particular purpose. And so we should make it easy for them to ask for it back. How your customers experience this part of the relationship can really be make or break. If you make it easy for them to manage their information, they'll remember. Even the act of deleting the data can reveal insights about your audience. Like how many people choose to do that? How many people start that effort but then abandon it 
uh, after being presented with clear information about how and why their data is being collected and used. In many ways, these self-service consent management portals are conversion funnels that can be optimized like any other conversion funnel. Aside from the regulatory compliance issue, the value of managing data correctly is you have clearly established data governance and workflow within your organization, and you have confidence that the customer data that you are keeping is correct. So we've defined our customer data need, we've made sure our MarTech stack is collecting it, and we have systems and policies in place to manage it. The goal is to create a unified view of the customer so we can better understand them. You might have also heard of this as a single source of truth or a 360 degree view of the customer, but really the goal is the same. Just know more about our audiences, gain insights into their behaviors, gain insights into their habits so we can serve them better. But how do we know if we are helping our audiences? And this is where the next part of the approach comes in. Analyze. What audience insights can we draw from the data is the question that drives this part of the work. The work during this phase is to create measurement models, to develop audience segments, to benchmark our, our metrics against industry standards so we know how we're doing relative to our peers, create dashboards so we can explore trends we're, that we're seeing, really uncover those trends that are maybe hidden in the data, and create dashboards that are tuned for reporting to our stakeholders. At the top there I mentioned uh, creating measurement models and really Creating a sturdy measurement model is really important. If you socialize it throughout your organization, the model can play a key role in uncovering your audience insights. So I do want to take a quick little detour into the digital measurement model, what it is and how we create it. And it has five key parts. One is a business goal. What are we trying to achieve, achieve for the organization but inside a single area, inside a single area of focus. So for HR, what they're trying to, to achieve is to get the best candidates in the door. Sales has a separate set of goals that are rolling up to the business. Marketing has a separate set of goals, but we're always thinking about a business goal at that departmental level. Inside of that is a tactic. So what's a high level approach that we can employ to accomplish that goal? Actions are specific interventions and a particular part of the digital experience used to implement a tactic. So if our, if our big tactic is uh, drawing the relationship between uh, different parts of our content, then maybe actions are going to be creating related content modules at the bottom of blog posts or sending out emails that link to those same blog posts. The KPIs, of course, uh, the number that helps us understand if a specific action is effective and should always include a baseline, a benchmark, and a realistic target. And finally, a good model will include an audience segment. It's a group of people or set of behaviors that we believe can move that KPI in the right direction. So a simple version of that model showing how all this fits together. See a business goal, drives down to a tactic. We may have several actions that roll up to the same tactic and for any action we can measure its effectiveness via one or more KPIs. And there are gonna be times when a single KPI, a single number is an indicator for two actions. And of course, there can be multiple tactics uh, attached to each goal, but we, we just want to simplify that model here. And once we have a model like this, once we've thought through the big goals, thought through the actions and the tactics that we're going to take to achieve those and established KPIs that we can use to measure the effectiveness of those, those actions, then we can develop dashboards to report on those KPIs. Here's a quick view of one we use internally at phase two just to uh, capture the big six uh, 
web clickstream analytics for reach and engagement. I also want to talk a little about a little bit more about audience segmentation. We mentioned segmentation earlier, but it's really worth a bit of a uh, deeper dive. As with most of this, I'm sure you're already familiar with segmentation, but it's useful to put it into a context. So you likely no stranger to segmenting messages to appeal to different audiences. Uh, putting multiple messages out into the market, each intended to engage a subset of your total audience. Uh, each message might highlight a different product attribute or an aspect of the purchase experience. So you might focus on features, you might focus on product benefits, you might focus on price, or you might choose to focus on industry expertise that you bring to the table via your products and services. And then you track sales or transactions for each of those messages determine how successful each is in driving and conversion. And that same logic, that same approach, really applies to customer data as well. That simple messaging segmentation based on product is a good start, but modern marketers have this wealth of customer data that we can use to segment audiences and create customer profiles that are tuned more toward audience attributes than product attributes. So you're not limited anymore messaging purely based on product details. So for instance, we can gather customer data based on behavior or demographics from email marketing platforms, social channels, web clickstream analytics. We can combine these data points into a single view of the customer and use that rich data set to fine tune our understanding of those audience segments. We can fine tune our approach per segment to influence the KPI. We might choose to focus on features for those first time customers. We might choose to focus on benefits, but only for those people who are referrals from an industry email. We might focus on price for customers who have previously abandoned a cart and we want to try and re-engage that transaction. Or we might want to focus on expertise for audiences who are currently in our About Us section because we know that they are curious about the organization. Each audience segment sees a version of the, me the message that performs best for them. We segment these audiences so we understand the relationship between the segment and the KPI so we can better engage with and serve that audience an experience that resonates with them. All these audience insights are driven by segmenting your customer data. Which brings us back to the approach and the last part of the approach. How do we activate our customer data? What changes should we make to improve the customer's digital experience? What strategies and tactics do we need to pursue? Based on the measurement model, we've got reporting dashboarding and we understand our audience segments. And now we have specific audience insights that can inform decisions across content strategy and user experience across marketing and content operations, across our SEO and our SEM campaigns, across our personalization campaigns, and all those can be informed by A-B testing. So really that's the sum of phase two's approach to addressing this customer data problem, to meeting the expectation of audiences and of your leadership. Let me shift gears a little bit and talk a bit about some of the challenges that the phase two team has heard from marketers and some steps that you can take to meet those challenges. We can't map our marketing activities to revenue generation. That's something that we've heard. The challenges inside of that may be data silos. We've got the data, but it's disconnected. So any real clear goal definitions and we're not able to demonstrate ROI, the return on investment inside of an individual channel. Solutions here are creating that measurement model so we do understand what our goals are. Working to increase collaboration between marketing and sales so we know what that top of the funnel looks like. Integrating data across those various tools so we break those silos. Developing audience segments 
so we know the specific audiences that can are really perceptive and receptive rather to our marketing activities and capturing attribution models so we know which of our activities which of our channels is really driving that conversion a second thing we've heard is you know i know people are coming to the site but i don't know who's donating here it's really the need to understand and interpret customer behavior consolidate and manage all that customer data there's an opportunity to document a co document the customer's journey from curious to convinced to committed we can inventory and audit all of our clickstream ecosystem to know who's coming to the site what the next steps uh, that they are taking are are those people do donating for example integrating all of that data into a single repository like a cdp and again getting back to those audience segments we've got lots of customer data and we can use that to uncover some really valuable insights we've heard i need to be ccpa compliant so the big challenge here is the need to adhere to those regulations uh, and probably just as importantly to demonstrate a commitment to privacy and security even beyond the regulations themselves so the solutions are to make sure we're collecting data correctly, transforming it, anonymizing it as we need, as we need to. Again, maybe getting a CDP, thinking about those security policies and procedures, identity management, uh, and creating those self-service consent management portals. I need to integrate more marketing tools. Hmm. So here we might have different definitions of metrics, even something as simple as a page view may have different definitions inside different tools. Uh, again, siloed data, privacy and security from having a multiple piece, a single piece of data in multiple places, and an inherited MarTech stack. Now we need to do something with, now we need to integrate it so we understand it. There's an opportunity here to uncover the business need that's behind each of the individual tools that we're using. Maybe we need to implement and configure the tools we have differently, integrating data as well as we can, and again, thinking about those governance models, those workflow processes. So once we do have our data integrated, once we do have our marketing tools integrated, that we know how to manage those in an ongoing way. And I, under, I need to understand what marketing channels to invest in. Here, the challenges behind that are the need to understand and interpret the customer behavior, to meet their expectation of a personalized digital experience, to meet their expectation of being remembered, uh, and always optimizing those marketing channel strategies. So there's Solutions to those are attribution modeling and dashboards to help us explore and dashboards to help us report on what, we're, what we've learned. I'm not meeting my revenue goals. That's what it all comes down to in, in, in some cases. So the need to understand and interpret customer behavior is a challenge that you're seeing again and again, because it really is in some ways at the heart of a lot of the things we've heard. Um, and creating that personalized experience that customers and, and constituents are now expecting. So we'll have this opportunity to explore trends, to report on those, and really to experiment with new content and engagement strategies. And that's, that last bullet is really important, that, that culture of experimentation, where we have data, we're uncovering insights, we analyze it and now we need to activate it. Inside activating uh, is going to be a process of experimentation, an iterative process of exploration. So we've covered a lot of ground in a very short time. So let's review. We've talked about the customer data problem, meeting the expectations that come from having access to so much customer data. We've talked about the define to activate approach of turning customer data into a true business asset. 
we took uh, some turns into the digital measurement model, dashboards, and audience segmentation, and how each of these are critical to uncovering audience insights. And we've reviewed some challenges and solutions. <clears throat> and of course, you can't tackle all of that all at once. And it can be very hard to know where to begin. Luckily, you can start from where you are. You can take baby steps inside each of those areas so it's not all or nothing. You don't have to do uh, those steps in, in a strict order. And as your organization grows and your, your goals change, you can revisit each part of that approach from define to activate. The important thing is to keep the goal in your site, a unified view of customer data that you can use to understand your audiences and inform your marketing strategies. So let me leave you with three steps you can take right now to start digging in on everything we've discussed and start to create some forward momentum. First, look at the systems that you're using to gather data and think about what's working, what's not. Two, ask yourself what single KPI, if you knew it, could transform your organization. And finally, pick your most engaged audience. What do you already know about their habits? What else do you need to know? Thank you. Thanks, Jason. At this time, we do wanna answer any questions you might have. Uh, feel free to send them. I see a few already, but just use the Q&A module in Zoom. Jason, our first question comes from Michael, and he asks, what is the value of a CDP when looking to create a single source of truth for customer data versus just using what's available in my CRM or marketing automation tool? So I think that, you know, you just need to remember the big overarching goal here is to create a single view of the customer. Uh, and if you don't need all the data that a CDP can provide, um, Maybe if you only need to manage your sales pipeline, then a CRM might be, might be a good choice. It might be a good choice for that single source of truth. Um, but the value of the CDP is if you, know, if you have customer data beyond that sales data, or you have lots of data spread across different tools, then a CDP is likely gonna be a better choice. You can do that define work and that collect work to understand what data you have and uh, make an informed choice about if you want to use your CRM or your some other MarTech tool or invest in a CDP. Jason, our next question comes from Jenna. She would like to know what tactics can I use to combat the too much data problem? How can I make it easier to sort what's useful from what isn't? Sorting. Hmm. Sorting what's useful from what isn't. So in, in the define phase, we, we're, we're answering that question, what customer data do we need to collect to meet the business goals? So I think this is a place where you know, impact mapping workshop can help you capture those goals. Um, thinking about a, a journey mapping workshop to understand how your goals map to the customer needs and the data that you collect along the way of the journey. Um, this might also be a place where a digital measurement model can help you map how each piece of data that you have serves an organizational goal. Um, I think that might be a way to, to combat that, that problem of having too much data, of uh, trying to sort out what's, what's useful. Thanks, Jason. Yeah. Our next question comes from Brent, and he would like to know, what ways have you found success in avoiding data loss when switching one or more tools in your stack or conversely data duplication or overload on junk data? So avoiding data loss when switching tools in your stack. Um, it's strangely, you know, switching tools is a good opportunity to conduct some housekeeping so if you're worried about 
losing data or having data that's duplicated or, or junk. Um, inventory what you have, inventory what you need, and remove the rest. Uh, with, with, I think with what you have left, uh, you can create a, diction, a data dictionary, excuse me, yeah, a, a data dictionary, so you know exactly what you have and where it's stored. Um, if you inventory the data, that's also a great opportunity to, to create those workflow and governance policies that we talked about uh, and to train your staff on those. Of course, after you switch QA and make sure that everything, uh, all these little bits of data ended up where you expected them to be. I think those are some good steps to avoid data loss when you're switching up your MarTech stack. Jason, our next question comes from Sarah and she asks, in terms of tools for creating custom dashboards for our organization, what do you recommend? Hmm. Now that kind of depends on uh, the staff inside your organization and uh, what tools you've already invested in. So if you're heavily invested in the, the Google Analytics world, or Google Tag Manager world and those things. Google Data Studio is a good place to, to start. Um, they have lots of really good templates you can use to get started quickly. Uh, if you have folks who are a little more senior with a little more expertise, then uh, something like Tableau might be good because it's very good at pulling together data from disparate systems, but it does, I think, it, uh, it expects a little more expertise. Um, you know, if you're not, if you're more invested in the Microsoft world, I would see Microsoft BI. If you're more invested in the Salesforce world, uh, they have uh, Datarama that does, that's really good at pulling data together, uh, creating that single source of, of truth and doing some visualizations and dashboarding. So I'd say it really depends on what your organization's already involved in um, and then go from there. Okay. Thanks, Jason. Yeah. So on behalf of Jason and our team here at phase two, we wanna thank everybody for joining us today. If you would like to reach out to Jason privately or have any questions you wanna ask us offline, please feel free, feel free to contact us anytime via marketing at phase2technology.com. We'll of course also be following up with a recording of today's webinar for easy sharing and on-demand access. Have a great rest of your day.